Welcome back to another exciting episode of Cyber Defense TV. I'm your host, Gary Malewski, the publisher of Cyber Defense Magazine. Sitting in my hot seat today, I want to welcome back Dr. Renee Burton, who is the senior threat researcher for a really cool networking and security company called Infoblox. Dr. Burton, welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me twice. So I really want to dive into what Infoblox is doing in the DDI space. And if you can kind of describe that and then where the threats are headed. And I think you and I had talked about how, I mean, it's the COVID, you know, the new norm. We've got issues of a remote, everybody's got a remote desktop. So tell us what you do and, and where Infoblox can help us and where it's going. Yeah, so Infoblox is a DDI company, which stands for DNS, DHCP, and IP management. So as a composite, that is uh, being able to manage your entire global uh, network. Um, and we do so in a hybrid environment. So we have customers who are just on-prem, we have customers who are just in the cloud, we have customers who are a mix, and then customers with remote employees, which has really become a lot more important now. Um, and from the perspective of security, for those of us, you know, sometimes in security, we're like, oh my gosh, what does IP management have to do with anything? Um, security really comes from knowing what is in my environment, right? Have I managed it? Do I know what my IP block spaces is? And being able to control that, if you can't um, know exactly what's in your network and be able to, to manage it effectively, which is what the, the DDI products provide for you, then you can't secure it. And then on top of that, we provide um, security as well. Um, you know, in a traditional kinds of kind of uh, DNS firewall is the is the nomenclature for for that uh, to make sure that threats are blocked um, at the DNS infrastructure layer uh, of the um, network connection. Now, the old story of IP management was kind of more in the network access control space. You know, the cleaning company plugs in the laptop at midnight in the bank's network and they actually DHCP leased an IP address or they went on to the, you know, the, the, the Cisco VoIP phone gateway and got an address and then they worm their way through the network and next thing you know, they've installed malware or they've uh, got access to bank accounts, the, you know, old stories, but it, this stuff happened in the past. IP management, why is this, you know, laptop on my network when it's not a trusted device? This is all shifted with the cloud and everybody working from home. So. What kind of IP-based threats do you see uh, that that you guys can help take care of? Yeah, so um, the threat space, both in terms of domains and IPs, which our our product you know covers that it's in in the DNS arena, um, is essentially the space of malware, really, because regardless of how that attack is entering in, uh, unless it's obviously a direct remote attack, obviously, um, but through through uh, attacks where they need to get a, a place into the network and then call out to exfiltrate data, to create a command and control, all of our, um, you know, points of that we're very familiar with in cyber, they need to get out through DNS. And it ends up also being um, one that is very, uh, easy to take advantage of in some ways. Uh, there's been a, a lot of work over many years to try and improve the security of DNS as a whole, but because it is the basic uh, pairing between IP addresses and, and domain names, um, you have to open that port up. Um, and so when you do so in a, in a way that's not secured, it allows for all of these extra attacks to, to come in, exfiltration of data as well as command and controls and, and all of those kind of pieces. I wonder if the internet can ever really be secure with cloud computing because it wasn't really designed for security. It was designed for open communications with open ports. Yeah, I I, I hear you. I mean, it, it, you're, you're always trying to do that balance, right? And in, in terms of being able to give everyone access to everything they need when they need it. And at the same time, uh, be able to provide that security for, you know, if, if, whether it's your, your security as you as a company or you as an individual, uh, that that balance is really hard. You know, there, at one point there was that um, notion that you would do security uh, by the, the mechanism uh, they've called whitelist only. There's language is a little, a little abstract, but um, wh where that case was, you couldn't get out to anything. And I'm sure everyone remembers these, right? These products where you can't go anywhere unless it's on this, you know, specific allowed list. Um, 
that's essentially crazy, as you said, in, in this kind of modern environment that doesn't work at all. So, uh, and, and then the adversary growing so much larger and becoming so much smarter, you have to employ things like machine learning and uh, other forms of data science. So that opens up your risk. So ultimately it becomes a balance in getting that flexibility of the network with the security aspect um, that's gonna protect you or your customers. Now, isn't Infoblock's design to help speed up the process of actually allowing people to communicate on the internet? So you're not just adding security and slowing things down, you're making the DDI environment a faster, easier to manage environment, you know, spin up remote offices quickly. And in this case, we'll probably talk about more the remote, you know, worker. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I hope. Yeah, you would it would be a fail if we slowed things down, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, the the customer is able to have a single pane of glass essentially for their D, their DDI management, and then they're able to um, on the fly be able to change their product from on prem into hybrid, and then uh, in particular to bring in those remote workers, which is um, really important now because the, the work environment is changing. So what's happening is as we all, including us at Infobox, um, left the workplace, we all fled to our homes. Mm -hmm. And um, in doing so, we exposed our corporate environments to the vulnerabilities that exist within our home network in that if one of my home devices is, ex is exploitable and has a lateral move, it might be able to get onto my corporate device. And then the company is at risk for a lot of uh, severe uh, loss, privacy, you know, you can imagine, right? The huge amounts that, that happens within that environment. Um, so in our case, one of our uh, products is a remote client um, and it, it's on um, all of our, it's always, I'm, I've been remote all the time. So it's on my laptop, it, it tracks all of my DNS and uh, also uh, protects through, through the firewall instance. And the remote administrator is able to deploy those to their workforce very rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, so in one case, uh, recently, in the last couple of months after uh, COVID, we had a global customer who was previously an on-prem customer and um, all of their workforce went, you know, went home all over. Uh, so they were able to deploy over 200,000 um, endpoint devices onto all of their employees within a handful of days, then providing that security to the company, even though those employees were not physically in their uh, offices anymore. Now, is this endpoint agent uh, technology a complement to a VPN? Is it a replacement for a VPN? Is it the, you know, IPS for my DNS and my DHCP and my IP address? What, what kind of, you know, where does it fit and does it work in conjunction with EDR or other kinds of security endpoint uh, technologies or EPP, et cetera? Yeah, it's absolutely complementing those. So we are staying in our you know, expertise zone, which is DNS, right? That, that's what we do. Um, so our endpoint client is all about uh, giving that small footprint on um, our remote desktops so that they can get out and, and connect to the cloud to get their DNS resolved and with the security checks that we provide via the cloud mechanisms uh, it works perfectly fine i mean i use multiple different kinds of vpns on a regular basis as well as my uh, client and then you know obviously you might have other uh, antivirus or other endpoint protection either provided by the company or otherwise um, and all of those are complementary to each other so dr burton thank you for taking us on a deep dive of infoblocks who is the market leader at management and security in a really important place that most people don't understand, DDI, DNS, DHCP, and IPAM, which is Internet Protocol Address Management, along with Domain Name Services and Dynamic Host Connection Protocol. In other words, how we all connect, when we connect, it's really important we do it securely, and that's what Infoblox helps us do. Great, thank you. Thank you, and then we'll come back another time for an exciting episode of Cyber Defense TV.